This is Darwin with Compass Mining. I'll be tearing down an Antminer S19J Pro all the way down to its hash boards. Let's get started. Okay, the rear simply is off. Let's get rid of this zip tie here. Now let's disconnect the rear fans from the control board. Let's go ahead and take care of the front fan assembly and also snip off this zip tie. Let's disassemble the front fan assembly. Front fan assembly has been removed. And it's always good to remember that the front fan assembly, the labels are in, as in you don't see them. And on the rear, they're out, as in you do see them. Let's take off our control board now. We're going to start by disconnecting the cables to the hash boards. Just a little squeeze and wiggle. Now let's go ahead and remove the power supply control line. and the voltage to the control board the cable that controls it that is and two screws in the front and our control board will simply slide right out and now let's remove our power supply we'll start with removing the bus bar on the power supply itself and while we're at it let's go ahead and take off these screws for the hash board One screw in the back here allows us to remove our power supply and it should slide right out. Now let's slide out our hash board. As you can see this particular S19J Pro has a aluminum back board. This will also have 32 screws holding in two heat sinks on the top and three heat sinks on the bottom. Let's go ahead and take out these other hash boards, leaving us our empty shell. Let's clean it up just a little before we take it away. Now we want to try to keep our environment for our miners as clean as possible. All of this avoids the dirt getting caught up in the heat sinks, in the fans, and ultimately shortening the lifespan. Okay, now that we have wiped that down, let's take a nice close look at one of the hash boards, shall we? We'll start with taking off these heat sinks. When you're uh, unscrewing these screws, it's good not to completely take them out so that we don't lose these screws. So loosen them from the board, but keep them in the heat sink. These heat sinks have a hard time lifting up off the plate due to the thermal paste that's keeping them down. So we're going to take a flat edge screwdriver, slightly lift up one corner to get it started, and it should lift up just like that. And let's take off the other side. Now let's take a closer look at our hash board. Should have 126 ASICs. These are the domains. These are the LDOs and PLL chips that power each domain. These go to these, these go to these, and so forth. These are the last seven domains that are powered from this circuit here. And that's why their chips look slightly different. In this area, this particular board does not use what's called a PIC chip, but it does have an EEPROM. Negative rail, positive rail, and the input coming in from our control board. Since this is an aluminum back board, all of our circuitry is going to be on the top side. You'll notice the back heat sinks aren't coming off. They are stuck on with the thermal base. 
but if you are going to be doing any type of work on this board removing ASIC chips or replacing anything else you might want to go ahead and take those off we won't be doing it today but it is always a good practice that if you're doing any type of work on the board to go ahead and clean off the old thermal paste and reapply some new one this will ensure that the ASIC chips will have good thermal transfer to the heat sinks on the top okay let's go ahead and put this all back together now that we've taken a closer look at our hash board make sure that your holes are lined up before starting to drill in that way you don't accidentally drill into a part of the circuit board and do damage if you've taken those rear heat sinks off it can be a little bit more challenging but just make sure all your holes are lined up before screwing down your heat sink now let's get to our fan here we'll start with removing the fan grills our fan grills are off and our fans as you can see this is a very dirty fan we're going to wipe that down just a little bit with our microfiber cloth let's get these new fan grills and some new screws okay we're going to just start with a corner screw first to get ourselves lined up okay our front fans are what they should be let's go ahead and change out the fans on our rear plate we're going to not only match up the cables but make sure this is label side out as you'll notice these cables will run up on the opposite side of the front fans so front fans cables will run up the right side rear fans cables will run up the left and just like that it's done now that we have some new grills on the front let's wipe down this power supply and i think we're just about ready to start putting everything back together let's give it its hash boards let's slide these in okay let's go ahead and put in our rear plate rear plate's gonna have this top groove there and a smaller profile for the board guide and our cables go up the left okay let's do the same step with our front fan grill we have our fans on let's go ahead and put on our power supply we're going to string up these fan cables out of the way and then we're going to line up our slots once they're lined up we will slowly slide it in let's put one screw in here and this should uh, make sure that our power supply is secure okay let's go ahead and put in our control board and front faceplate this control board will go into these slots slide it all the way back and then our faceplate our front plate make sure to line it up with everything let's go ahead and string up our cables for our fans so typically our fans in the front are going to go into the first two slots on our control board and then our rear fans go into these slots here the other thing to remember for these rear fan cables we want them to go into this little channel in between the power supply and your main chassis let's go ahead and put in our power 
cable from the power supply to the control board and then our control line from the power supply goes in like so and then of course last but not least our control lines for the hash boards might seem like this one's going here but actually this other one goes over to chain one or board two and then this one goes over to chain two or board three now that we have those in let's go ahead and put in our power bus bars this is negative this is positive negative is going to be just a little bit bigger than our positive let's start with our negative let's start with these screws on the power supply with these we're going to leave the screws that we put in just a little bit loose so that everything aligns up And let's go ahead and put on our positive rail. Now that we're all lined up, let's go ahead and tighten them all up. Let's go ahead and pull out the excess for our cables, give it a little twist, and tuck it under. This one will eventually go right here in this groove. So let's go ahead and put in our power supply cover, two tabs, two slots. Let's make sure not to catch these fan wires right here. It's gonna go right here in this little groove. Just like so. And then line up your two screw holes. Make sure that these wires are not pinched before you screw it down. Pinch wires mean that you run the risk of pinching a control line or severing a power line fans won't work and your miner won't be happy last but not least we have our top cover i'm going to slide this in making sure not to pinch the wires lines up and fit around the front and slide it down it should snap in and then let's just tighten up this last screw and that's it Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a teardown of an Antminer S19J Pro.